So how do you make a woman love being around you? How do you have a conversation where you're fun, you're charming, you're charismatic, and you're just feeling on? Well, in today's video, we're gonna go over four habits that make sure you're never boring with a girl again, and how to stop going into a conversation with a woman desperate for her to like you to the point that you come off as needy and insecure. Hi, I'm Bobby Rio. And if you've ever been on a date or just talking to a woman socially, and you just couldn't snap yourself into that fun, talkative state where she loves being around you, then I want to share four habits, four mindsets that instantly bring out a more charming side of your personality so that you're able to keep her attention long enough to create that chemistry and that attraction that you need to move things forward. Now, as I mentioned, most guys go into a conversation so desperate for the woman to like them that they come off as needy, insecure, try hard, but even worse, that tendency of wanting a woman to like us, not only does it backfire and have the opposite effect, it also stifles our real personality. It keeps you in your head and it prevents you from really being yourself, making it impossible for her to feel like she knows you, which she'll never feel any connection. It's also one of the reasons that so many guys struggle with what do I say. So the first habit is to switch from impressing to expressing. So what do I mean? Well, here's a hard and fast rule of vibing. The best way to make people like you is to express your personality freely and let the chips fall where they will. In fact, there's nothing that's a bigger turn on for a woman than to catch a glimpse of your raw, unfiltered personality. In order to be on, you need to express your personality unfiltered and unconstrained. So what exactly does this mean? It means that the first enemy of being charismatic is filtering your personality through the impure agenda to impress. See, the minute that happens, you've officially begun micromanaging the conversation. The irony here is that being preoccupied with trying to affect the way that people see us is exactly what winds up subcommunicating lower value. See, there's a filter that asks, what will this convey about me? And our brain reaches for facts we think that other people will find impressive. But here's the thing. If we're not expressing our personality unfiltered, naked, raw, nothing will appear natural. Let me say this another way. When you're being your real self, a vibe naturally occurs. When you're filtering yourself, a vibe is naturally stifled. So one of the things I always say is to get the girl, you have to bring her into your world. You have to take her on a wild ride into your reality and your world and your personality are not the facts about you. So what is it then? It's expressing. It's the way you are when you're not trying to impress. Listen to that again. It's the way you are when you're not trying to impress. What I discovered is that most guys don't even know what it means to be themselves or to be real or to display their personality. Recently, I was on a coaching call with a client where I asked him, I said, just be real with me for a minute. Let me, let me get to know you. I go, give me a sense of who you are. And he stops for a second and then he proceeds to tell me everything that he likes. Oh, I'm a fan of MMA. I love training. I love training hard. I train a few days a week. Louis CK is my favorite comedian. I think he's really funny. I want to go to his shows. Those are all facts. Even worse, those are facts dug from his mind after a filtering what he thought would impress Bobby Rio the most. Let me give you an example of what I mean by just expressing, okay? It's riffing, it's expressing. Man, I had to give a best man speech for my brother's wedding and it was like the hardest thing that I ever had to do. First off, I have a warped sense of humor. So as I'm writing it, my mind keeps going to like all the jokes that will completely be inappropriate and probably make my grandma throw up in her soup. Then I'm like, driving around, practicing my car for two days, trying to remember at a traffic light. And I look over and there's like a bunch of high school kids like heckling at me. So I ripped up three versions of the speech, kept starting from scratch. Like I wanted to find that balance of like emotional honesty and being funny. I didn't want to be up there, the guy like up there, you know, sobbing about, you know, how fast life goes. Okay. Let me ask you, who do you feel like you know more? The MMA fan or the best man speech guy? The best man's speech is one little anecdote, right? It's, but it expresses who he is. 
And that's what a woman falls for, who you actually are when you're not trying to impress her. It's one of the reasons that a girl winds up very often dating a guy that she works with or she knows from her social scene because this guy's very often just being himself around her, which allows her to open up and be herself. And that's a lot more enjoyable than two people talking with their social masks on, trying to look good to the other one, right? So one of the things that I recommend clients is to start telling more anecdotes and get in the habit of turning anything that happens throughout your entire day into an anecdote that expresses your personality. Talk your thoughts out loud is a simple way to remember this advice, right? Uh, instead of just like telling a girl what you did yesterday, choose an event from the day and give her a glimpse into your mind as you were going through that event. Okay, let's get into the second habit and that's to shut off your logical mind. So have you ever had the thought, I know what to do, but I can't get myself to do it. When I get in front of a woman, my mind goes blank. The only thing that I can think of are boring small talk questions. I know that I should be fun, I know that I should be flirty, I know that I should be sexual, but for some reason I'm trapped in boring mode. So what's going on here? The battle. There is a constant battle going on in your mind. The battle is between your logical brain and your creative brain. Both of them are trying to grab the wheel. Here's the problem. The minute you try to think of what to say, your logical mind has grabbed the wheel. And here's a cold hard fact. You can't create a fun flirtatious vibe when your logical mind has full control of the wheel. This is why the first step in a conversation should not be to think about how to impress a girl or how to use a tactic or even how to flirt with her. So then what is it? The first thing that you need to do is shut down your logical brain. Your logical brain is the part of you that tries to micromanage a conversation and is constantly analyzing and worrying about everything that you're about to say. And this makes you appear stilted. It makes you appear try hard and boring. So you need to shut this part of your brain down and activate your imagination. This is an important concept to understand and it'll make a lot more sense as, uh, as I go through this video. And don't let the word creativity or imagination intimidate you. This is not about being some creative poet or imaginative like wording or science fiction writer or any of that. It's about the ability to see connections that you normally might have missed. The good news is that it's already here for you. You probably notice it sometimes when you're, maybe when you're with people that you're comfortable with, your friends, right? And you're just vibing. You guys are just free flowing. When you're in a fun state vibing with your friends, you probably surprise yourself with some of the jokes and the stories and the banter that flows out of your mouth. The reason this happens is because you allow your logical brain to go to sleep and your imagination takes over. You're not trying to impress your friends. You're just joining in the vibe between you and you're adding to it. This is also why some of the best conversations that we have are talking about nonsense. If you really analyze your best conversations, nonsense, silliness, they make up imaginary scenarios, right? All of this is the type of conversations that I talk about when I talk about taking her back to the playground. It's just this silly conversation. In fact, anytime a sentence starts with, we should totally insert something that you're never actually gonna do, but it's just fun to imagine and play around with, you're having one of these type of conversations. Same thing with role playing or inventing some made up mission for you and a woman to do together. So the habit that I want you to play around with is just forget facts and get to know you type questions. The easiest way to transition into it during a conversation is to expand on something that you like. So for instance, if you're talking to a woman about the TV shows that you like and you're a fan of Yellowstone, you could be like, I totally see myself living on a ranch, riding horses, and my horse would have like a really badass name like Rocket. And then you could bring her into the imaginative scenario. Like, you seem like a city girl though, so at first you'd probably be like, hate it there. But then we'll be out on the ranch and you'll get a cool horse and a couple of cowboy bars and you'll be like, ah, oh, I love it now, right? It's just a stupid conversation, but the point is not what you're saying. The point is you're activating your imagination and you're encouraging her to activate hers because the sooner you do that, the sooner the two of you are vibing and that's where chemistry take place. It takes place when you're just free flowing and vibing. So how do you get to that creative brain and how do you get it to grab the wheel early in a conversation? That brings us to habit number three. 
You want to avoid faulty frameworks. It all comes down to what conversation framework you use. Most of us uh, use one of three common faulty frameworks and all these frameworks trigger the logical brain and each of these frameworks will push you back into your own head and it'll bury your real personality. So let's talk, let's really quickly talk about the three of them that you want to avoid. Number one, the interview framework. This is the most common. We're all guilty of this from time to time. This is the conversation where you jump from one fact about the other person's life to the next. So, where did you grow up? Oh, cool, cool. How was your weekend? What, did you do anything fun? Oh yeah, cool. So where did you go to college? What did you study? Right? In this framework, you're just hoping and praying that you find a topic that you can latch onto. Oh wow, you watch Game of Thrones? Who's your favorite character? Then you wind up talking about Game of Thrones for 20 minutes until you've got nothing left to discuss and then it's back to the endless questions. She walks away or she leaves the date thinking that there was no chemistry and she tells her friends that maybe you were boring or you had no personality or you just didn't click together. The second framework is the comedian framework. Nothing will make your mind go blank faster than believing that you need to be funny before a vibe is created between you and a girl. See, funny happens naturally once a vibe is sparked. But when you go into a conversation looking for funny things to say, you're triggering your logical brain and your mind will go blank and you'll wind up thinking, oh, I couldn't think of anything good to say. Here's the deal. When your creative mind is in control, being funny is easy and it's natural. However, if you go into a conversation with your logical mind trying to find funny things to say, you're gonna sputter out very quickly. Plus, you've probably heard me say that girls want fun, not funny. So the third is the impressor framework. And we kind of talked about this, but this is the framework where you go into a conversation with a list of things about yourself that you think are impressive. Oh, you've traveled a lot. You've got a respectable job. You played varsity quarterback in high school. Whatever your facts are, right? We all have them. And you want to weave them into the conversation any way you can. You think, well, if she just knows this about me, she'll find me attractive or she'll be willing to talk to me. Again, when you have an agenda to impress, your logical mind is driving. This is also why the advice talk about something you're passionate about is very often bad because again you go into the conversation with an agenda to move the conversation towards your passion and that still keeps you inside of your own head. Now these are just a couple of the faulty frameworks so you want to replace these frameworks with frameworks that pull your attractive personality out of you with as little thinking as possible. In my on formula program I teach 12 of these frameworks that you can learn more about. I'll put a link to the program in the description below this video. I open up the training a couple times a year. So depending on when you're watching this video, it may or may not be available. Either way, I'm going to put a link to it below in case you're interested. But first, let's get into the fourth habit that we want to discuss, and that's to stay non-reactive. Up until now, we've discussed expressing your personality, activating your imagination, and quieting your logical brain and avoiding faulty conversation frameworks. But there's something else that's required to get and remain in that state of being on. You need to develop a conviction that you will not falter under shit tests, rejection, or uncertainty. Let me explain something in a very, very simple way. The more confident you initially appear, the more women will push back against you to see if you're for real. And when that pushback comes, which it inevitably will, this is the moment where most guys crumble. They lose their state and they withdraw back into their own head. Maybe you've been there before. You were on, right? You're talkative, you're feeling confident. Then you notice that a girl wrinkles her nose at something you said or she rolls her eyes or maybe she overtly takes a jab at you with like a subtle in insult or a condescending tone of voice or she teases you in a way where you're not sure if she's serious or not. You know, she made a sarcastic comment about your shoes. She told you, stop trying so hard or, or you're not even my type, right? Once I had a girl wipe spit off her face and tell me you just spit on me while I was in the middle of a story. Brutal, right? It's very easy to let that get you all rattled. A lot of times the girl doesn't even have to do anything. A lot of times 
sometimes you psych yourself out, uh, maybe the conversation moves towards a topic that you have a deep level of insecurity about. You know, you didn't go to college, maybe you're, maybe you have an embarrassing job, or maybe you live with your parents, or you have a limited past sexual experience, whatever, right? And as soon as the conversation takes a turn in that direction, poof, your inner game suddenly crumbles. Your cool guy personality crumbles and you revert back into that impressor mode or that interview mode. And no matter how hard you try, you can't get that mojo back. What the hell happened? You experience reactivity. You wanna be non-reactive. That means you have to have the ability to let things roll right off you and stay normal, stay relaxed in the face of pressure and adversity. In martial arts, there's an image that's used to define a mind like water. When you stick your hand into a stream, the water reacts and appropriately continues its path and just goes around your arm. There's no pause, there's no hesitation, there's no having to think, there's no, you know, where, what's the best route? It just naturally and instantly goes around, which is how you should strive to counter any real or perceived attacks that come at you. So what does this look like? Imagine a girl tells you, ah, oh, I hate guys who wear vests. You look better without it. How do you react? Let's look at three options. Option one, you take the vest off and you make a joke. Do I look better now? Option two, you hesitate. Oh, I'm glad I'm not trying to impress you. Option three, thanks for the advice. And then go on like she never even said anything. In the first two scenarios, you react it and you let her comment change your state. In the third scenario, you had a mind like water and you continued on your path regardless of what she said. You gotta build the habit of not emotionally reacting to the things that a woman says or does. There's a concept called anti-fragile coined by Nassim Taleb, which refers to things that grow stronger when they're tested or when they're experiencing chaos. It means that something does not merely withstand a shock, but it actually improves because of it. And you want to think this way in terms of your conversations. When a woman tests you or she throws a comment out where you're, you know, you're, you experience a little bit of that shock, right? Instead of getting shaken by it, use it as fuel to improve the conversation, to make yourself more sure of yourself, right? So to quickly review, the four habits that will help bring out your more fun, charismatic, and charming self are stop trying to impress and start trying to express. And a habit that'll help you do this is the habit of telling anecdotes where you reveal what was going through your mind as something was happening. Now, there's a bit of an art to telling a good anecdote and we go through that in my On Formula program, but for now, just begin building that skill of expressing yourself. It doesn't matter if the anecdotes aren't even good or perfect or anything, right? The second habit is to shut off your logical mind and activate your imagination. And you do this by talking about imagination imaginary scenarios. Now, when you hear me say this, it might sound weird or strange, but this is something that we already do with our friends. If you actually pay attention when you're just talking and stuff, the simple sentence, we should totally, and then something that you're not actually ever going to do, but it's really fun to joke about and riff on. We all do it. So get in the habit of doing it when you're talking to a woman that you're into. Then you want to avoid conversation frameworks that produce boring conversations like the interview mode or a conversation where you're consciously trying to to make her laugh and you're thinking of funny things to say. Uh, like I mentioned in my on program, I teach 12 conversation frameworks that naturally bring out your fun and charismatic side. So if you're interested in those, click the link below and we'll learn a little bit more about them. And the fourth habit is to stay non-reactive where you let negative comments or tests roll off you without having any effect on you. Now, if this is something that you struggle with or you just wanna learn better frameworks for your conversation, with women, then check out my on program. There's a link in the description. As I mentioned earlier, I only open this program up a couple times a year. So depending on when you're actually watching this video, it may or may not be available right now. And as always, if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe to learn more. Leave me a comment and let me know what you'd like to see me cover and share this video with anybody that you think would find it helpful.